Can you hear me well? Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so during this presentation, I'm going to talk about this project we are developing, which is about healthcare provider collaboration and um, the impact on patient outcome and access to care. Um, so uh, currently, uh, my name is Mina, by the way, I'm a clinical researcher in the Valley Institute. And one of the things that we really care about uh, here is improving access to care and outcome for patients. So this is this is an effort um, that um, we are doing here and uh, currently on an RMRDA and hopefully we will be able to get a pilot grant to develop this project. So. Um, we all work in healthcare, so we are familiar with the challenges that exist in terms of collaboration and communication, coordination between healthcare providers, especially in the care of patients uh, with chronic conditions, because um, usually they have so many different complications and there are a large number of healthcare providers involved. So uh, collaboration and coordination is a big challenge. Um, there are tools that are previously um, presented by researchers like survey and interviews that provide individual provider perspectives uh, about their collaboration, which is great. However, um, if we want to be able to have a system level understanding of this relation, we need to seek other approaches. So um, that's one of the motivations for this research, which we'll, we'll uh, be using larger scale health data like electronic health records and claims data to see how we can um, identify these relationships that exist between providers and how to improve them. And ultimately, our goal would be to improve patient outcomes and, as I previously mentioned, uh, patient access to care, which definitely will impact patient outcomes as well. So I want to explain um, social network analysis a little bit. Uh, this is going to be the main approach that we're using. Um, definitely, there are going to be other tools that uh, will be used in this project. but um, when I say social network analysis, I realize that people have different perspectives. Uh, either they are familiar um, or they're not. And if they're not, they think about it as like social support or um, Facebook or Twitter, which none of that is wrong. But um, the idea of social network is providing measures and tools uh, for researchers to understand and model the relationships that exist between uh, people. So that's why we have a social part. Uh, there because it's actually come from sociology and it started in the 1930s which um, some uh, researchers they introduced some measures and tools to model these relationships between people and these people can be individuals or organizations so if you look at this network that we have here um, we have a group of healthcare providers from their outfits you can see that like uh, surgeons, doctors, social workers probably, and they are represented um, as nodes in this network, and they're connected through links. So um, you can define these links however you want, depending on your purpose. For example, it can be um, how many times they talk during a week or a month, and you can give weight to these links or edges. And uh, that would be a representation of your health system. So when you model these relationships, what happens is that you can identify hidden channels of communication and collaboration between these healthcare providers. Um, and I just want to show you one way to instruct these networks because there are different ways or discussions about how to improve um, constructing these networks from larger scale data. So one of the ways that we can look at is, uh, for example, if we have access to claims data. So if you have seen claims data before, and if not, uh, just let's imagine that we have some information about patients and we have information about providers. So what you can see is a group of providers that probably have some patients in common because um, usually they belong to the same health system or because of the insurances, uh, they have some patients in common. So um, let's think about provider one and two and consider provider two as a primary care and provider one as a specialist. And as you can see, um, these two providers share two patients. So they have two patients in common. And um, we can consider these two providers as nodes in our network and then connect them to a link. And that link would be the number of patients shared between these providers. Now, there are different discussions about how we can make sure that these relationships exist um, one of the uh, ways that uh, we can consider is setting a threshold. So, for example, saying that uh, we only consider patient sharing relations between providers if it's two or more patients um, during a one-year period. So that's that's one of the rules that we can apply. So 
we will not be considering relations between providers who should one patient or less. There are, of course, limitations and there are ways to improve this approach, for example, considering the date of visits for providers um, between a provider that's primary care and specialist, like in a three months period, so we will make sure that there was like a referral relationships. Um, if you have the referral codes in your um, electronic health record of claims, that would be even better because you can have a directed network. You can actually see directions between providers. So, as I mentioned, um, social network analysis provide measures for you to quantify these relationships between individuals and organizations. Uh, so, I just want to give you an example of one of these measures. Um, this is a very common measure uh, that's used uh, when we use social network analysis. It's called uh, centrality, and there are different types of centrality. And again, depending on your purpose, um, and what you want to model and what you want to show, you can use different types of centrality. Now, here I have only three, and um, they're going to show us the important nodes in a network. So the simplest one is degree, which shows how many direct connections uh, an individual or person in a network, um, any organization, a hospital organization has. And the other two are between and closing. So a little harder, there are some calculations involved that I'm going to show you, but we don't have to get into the details of them. So let's go look at this network that we have here. Um, imagine that these nodes are actually healthcare providers. And if we look at node B here, you can see that there are three direct connections to node B. So the degree would be three. And then you can calculate betweenness and closeness. And uh, if you want to go to betweenness, you can see that node B is between node C and A between node D and A and between node E and A. So um, the data don't matter. Um, if this plot is intuitively, um, imagine that these are healthcare providers. Node B is a primary care provider, and we have three other providers in the right, and then one provider in the left. So if we don't have node B here, the uh, right part and left part of the network would be disconnected. So Intuitively, we would know that node B is an important node here, even if we don't look at those numbers. But according to those numbers, the centrality is again, node B is the most central uh, node in this network, the most important node in this network. So you can expand these measures to different types of network. Your network might be weighted, so you may have weights on those um, links between nodes, or it might be directed. So there are expansions and there are um, softwares and tools that you can calculate these measures. You don't have to calculate this by hand. And then you can have your central nodes. So if we develop this approach, if we have our network, we can supplement it with other tools. Uh, if you are familiar with clustering, for example, of large data, we have a similar um, tool here, which is community detection. You can apply that on the network and you can identify group of nodes that are more densely connected. And we can consider that as a team of healthcare providers. So if we want to look at teams, this is a tool that can help us. So hopefully if we apply this approach to our data, we identify this network of healthcare providers, we would be able to understand the structure of the network of healthcare providers, how they are related, uh, especially if we're interested in the care of patients with chronic conditions. You know, we have AOP goals here at Christiana Care. So for example, we want to look at patients with diabetes and their providers. And then how the provider characteristics that we get from the network will impact patients' outcome and access to care. So one of the solutions that we want to look at for improving care of patients with uh, chronic conditions is having team-led models. So hopefully these tools that we have, this social network analysis, modeling of relationship between healthcare providers and community detection tools will help us to identify those already established relations between healthcare providers that could be considered as the team. Um, so, with that, um, I would like to end this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.